I'd like to quickly introduce, uh, again, I like doing brief introductions, so I always feel like the musicians and the speakers themselves can always do a much better introduction than I can. Um, but yes, we have had foundation communities here before. I think Ron they made it pretty apparent that we we're really excited and want to get more involved with them. Um, there are some specific programs that I'm really excited for, and then I think that um, you know there's, there's a match between the needs that they have and where I think we can fit. Um, so yeah, I'd like to welcome uh, Donna. She is the uh, Director of Individual Giving and Engagement yes. over at Foundation Communities. Uh, thank you. I looked it up. <laughs> um, so yeah, please uh, help me and give her a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, thank you for inviting us to be here today. I'm very excited to be able to talk to you all and I'm really excited about the prospect of you getting more involved with us. Um, Foundation Communities is a local, homegrown nonprofit. We were started in 1990 by a group of UT kids um, with the mission of pulling people out of poverty and keeping them out of poverty. Um, for a lot of people, living in poverty most definitely means being homeless. And when we think of homeless, some of us conjure up a picture of someone standing on the corner during the day holding up a sign and living under a bridge in the evening. But um, what a lot of us don't encounter are the hundreds and hundreds of families here in Austin that are homeless, that live in shelters, that live out of their cars. There are something like a thousand children every single night here in Austin who do not have a home to go home to go home to at night. Both groups are the groups that we serve. All of these folks have faced some crisis or health issue or life obstacle that's left them in just utter poverty. That is not acceptable to us, and it is our mission to change that. Foundation Communities owns and operates 23 affordable housing communities. We are home to some 6,000 residents who could not possibly afford to live here in Austin otherwise. We believe Austin is a better place when people from all walks of life can live here and thrive here. We're not offering a temporary shelter. We're giving people the, the chance to live in their own apartment. Every person that lives with us pays some rent. It's just according to what they can afford. We have two kinds of communities, one for families, one, two, and three bedroom apartments, and those rents are adjusted to what you can afford, how many people are living there. And then we also have apartments that are just for single adults. Those are efficiency apartments. They are fully furnished. We pay all the utilities and we help you figure out how you can pay for that. So if you, many of the people that live there are on disability, uh, social security, veterans benefits, and so we sit down with you and figure out what little portion out of that you can pay to the rent so that you know this is your home and you can stay there forever. It's yours. We realize that just providing a roof over your head doesn't always solve the issue that got you there in the first place. So we want to address those issues also. That's why we don't only provide the affordable housing, but we also provide all kinds of support services for free at our apartments. And these are crucial services that really transform people's lives. Some of our families are coming from very dire circumstances. We provide them with intense one-on-one -on -one case management. We have a food pantry at every one of our communities. We have job readiness training. We help people uh, find how to look for a job, how to dress for a job, how to write a resume. Uh, we help them with clothing for the job interview, how to write a letter of reference, how to find a letter of reference. 
We help with parent advocacy. We also offer for free, and this is something that Ron was talking about, one-on-one -on -one financial coaching, classes in money management. We offer a match savings fund. For every dollar that you can save, we will put in four, but you need to use it either to go to school, start a business, or buy a home. We provide free tax preparation, and that's just that's not just to our residents, our 6,000 residents. That's for any person that lives in Austin or probably outside of Austin that makes under a certain income level. You come in and for free, we will do your taxes. Many times getting a tax refund for these folks means they can buy groceries. We also provide all kinds of healthy living programs. We have fitness classes, nutrition classes, stress management classes, yoga classes. We offer residents rehab <coughs> services if they need them, ongoing physical and mental health, counseling and care, help with medication. A lot of people coming to us are coming to us with mental illness. They've been living on the street. Uh, we help them get their meds right and they're able to be productive citizens again. It's hard to stay healthy on the street, really hard. Something we're particularly proud of is our after school and summer academic programs for children. We have learning centers at our family communities. Um, they're right in the middle of the apartment complex. We, we build our communities usually very near an elementary school. Our learning center staff then work closely with that elementary school, and we, at the end of the school day, our staff go pick up the children that live in our apartment, either walk them back to our uh, apartment, or we have the school bus drop them off in front of the learning center, and then we get them off of the bus and into our learning center, where they are there from 2.45 to 6, if they choose to be. As soon as they get there, we do homework with them. We break them up by class. We're very aware, we're working with the school so we know the curriculum. We do homework with them. We do one-on-one -on -one tutoring with them if they have trouble in a certain subject. We do enrichment activities like robotics, our art camp, our science camp, our scouting. We have a structured outside exercise. We feed them dinner and at six o'clock their parents can walk from their apartment complex from their apartment to get their child or the child can just walk home. They've been fed, their homework is done. Um, but, I, but I think it's important to say that more than just doing that with these kids, they're also getting a lot of encouragement, they're getting a lot of praise, they're being told that college is a real option to them this is the first time many of them have ever heard this. Many of their parents did not go to college. Uh, many of their peers are not going to go to college. But we really create a college-going culture in these learning centers as a way to get our kids out of the cycle of poverty. And it's working. Um, many of our, the, um, the cumulative GPA for our kids in all our learning centers, and we have 1,000 kids in our learning centers, was a 3.5 four, which is well above their peers. So we are very proud of that. Um, so there are lots and lots of stories of folks being successful living with us, and I wanted to share one with you right now. We have a video that I'd like to play for a woman who lives at one of our communities. Being born with a birth defect, I encountered a lot of bullying when I went to school. It, it was tough, it was tough. In middle school, I had a counselor who was just a, a godsend. She took me under her wings and encouraged me to come out of my shell and she gave me that confidence and I felt like, wow, you know, I can, you know, really be anything that I want. That was the first time I knew that I wanted to become a counselor. So I delved into academics. I was super excited to go to college, you know, start my journey, start my dreams. 
But about a year and a half into college, my mom passed away. And that sent me into a downward spiral. So I dropped out and I just didn't know how I was gonna get on my feet. I was going through a, a really tough time in my life and I met this guy who I thought we could make a really good life together. He just kind of sprung on me that he had a daughter who was pregnant and that she needed a place to stay. I decided she could stay with us. So we were all living under one roof. Um, my boyfriend, um, my boyfriend's daughter, and after a few months, she had a little baby. But her and the baby, they didn't really connect. Not long after, my boyfriend and I broke up and he and his daughter moved out and I was left behind with the baby. Michael has changed my life in so many ways. No, I didn't birth him, but he is my son and it's my responsibility to take care of him. I really feel like now my, my life has tremendous focus because my focus is basically providing a better life for him and I. And Michael has special needs, and so I have had to take him to several doctors, including occupational therapy, including physical therapy, and all of those things have been super expensive. Being a single mom has been a little bit tough. My friend told me that Foundation Communities was an awesome program and I should really check it out. It is one of the best decisions I've ever made. When I first saw the apartments, I was really impressed with the cleanliness of the area. I felt very safe on the property. I saw the playground, the playscape, and I really thought that Mike would enjoy that. Also, they have fitness trails, and they have exercise classes here that you can take, from yoga to Zumba to get you moving and grooving. There's nothing like having a place that I could call my own. I love it, I love it. A place where Michael and I could sit down and eat together. Being able to go back to work and school and having my son right at the Learning Center, that has been a huge, huge help for me. He has been diagnosed with autism and ADHD and the teachers there at the Learning Center have been fabulous in working with him. I feel like he's more confident. I feel like he's really coming into his own as a kid. One of the things that got me in this place where I needed foundation communities is I was not managing my money properly. And so one of the first things that I hurried up and signed up for was the financial management classes. All of those services are right here at Foundation Community. There's no reason that you can't get it on your feet when you live here. What does this guy do? He's a conductor. What happened? Currently, I have eight more classes to finish my bachelor's degree to become a counselor. And yeah, I'm super excited. After all these years and all of these bumps in the road, I finally have my dream back. And so I'm taking advantage of all the services that I can to be able to realize that dream. So that when I'm like, hey, I, I'm ready to fly, I'm ready to go out there in the world and really contribute, I can do that. Foundation Communities has given us an opportunity to really get ourselves together and it's giving me and my son a better life, without a doubt. So that is one of 6,000 stories. Um, we, uh, as I said, have 23 communities. We're breaking ground on a new community in Mueller um, this summer to be home to 130 more. 
um, we want to offer the same services to those folks that we offer already to the other 6,000. We're going to continue to build new communities and serve more people as long as we have the support from people in Austin to help us with all of the support services that we want to have at all those communities. And that's why I'm so excited to be here with you all um, and the prospect of perhaps you helping us with some of the services that we offer. Um, as Ron said, we do the financial coaching. We also do so, so many other things, and I'd love to share those with you. One in particular that we do with groups is so um, we make dinners for communities, and we bring them at noon or at night um, once every month for six months. A group will sign up to do that. We have our family communities and our single adult communities. Most people want to sign up for the family communities because they love being around the kids. So we don't have as many people that sign up to help with the single adults. Um, and they're the ones that really need community because they live alone. It's harder for them to make dinner for themselves or have the desire to make dinner for themselves. And whenever we do a supper or a lunch for them, I mean, they just turn out in droves because they're just so thankful to be able to talk to other people and to eat. Um, so that is a suggestion for something that uh, your community could do is, is something like that. And, I, and I'm going to let Jordan talk about that more. Um, so much of what we do depends on volunteers. We couldn't do the things that Leah was describing or the things that I was describing without volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have thousands of volunteers a year that help us do the work we do. That's the only way we could do it. Um, we'd love to have your help. I want to say thank you from the bottom <laughs> of my heart for letting me speak to you today. And I would love to follow up and find out if y'all can help us. And I'd love to answer any questions if you have them. Are there any questions? Yeah. I work for one of the, well, the largest solar companies. Yeah. In the Texas, and I was a good contact by a solar company to try to help you out. So first let me say that I, did, I, I didn't mention this, but we build all of our communities as green as we can, and we put solar panels on all of our communities so that the utility rates are really low and that we also get rebates um, and our, our residents get rebates. So we do work with different solar companies as far as us purchasing that. Is that what you're talking about or are you talking about something else? No, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, yes. So I'm glad that you keep in contact. Well, we, we are going out and getting bids on putting solar panels on our communities. And if that's something you're interested in, I'd love your we card. Don't do that for free. That's, I think that's good idea. We don't have anyone doing that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. Wow. What is, what is the point of for It's a very good question. Uh, we need both. Uh, we need money all the time. So I was explaining to Ron that 80% um, of our operating costs are paid for by rent. So we're self-sustaining in that way. But we still have to come up with the other 20%. We do get federal grants and we do go after big foundations, but my job is individual giving and I've been tasked with raising 1.5 million from individuals. Do you have a quota? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know that life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say money. <laughs> yes. Mm 
mm-hmm. uh, that's good to do is that the same food pantry that's facilitated by the Central Texas Food Bank? Yes, it is. Okay. It is. So, so let me let me tell you that we do we have partnerships with other nonprofits in town. Chapel Area Food Bank is one of them. They they <coughs> furnish our food banks. Uh, Family Elder Care is one. They help us with uh, making sure that residents that aren't able get their meds. They come in and look and make sure they get their meds. Um, They also help with taking people to the grocery store. Um, Austin Recovery offers a 90-day free rehab for people that need it, so we partner with them. Um, We partner with Caritas and Salvation Army. Um, They actually will pay rent on a few apartments so that some of their clients, when they first are coming out of homelessness, can move in there and not have to pay a penny until we get them, uh, hopefully, in a place where they can. So we, par- we we couldn't do what we do without our partnerships. Yeah. Never heard of it. Because they actually provide wow. a market way for, for the homeless. They bring all of that, those items with us, and we haven't had to purchase any of those for over a year now. Wow. Um, so I was just in contact with the Austin chapter. I want to write that down. So, so one, of the, one of the things we do for folks when they first move in, particularly those that are moving in from homelessness, because not everyone moves in from homelessness. Some people move in that just can't afford, they got evicted. I mean, you could say they're homeless now. But um, some people are moving in after years of living in a shelter or in their car. We provide them with what we call a welcome home basket. That's another thing that groups do for us. We provide them with a welcome home basket, and in it we put things like sheets, towels, detergent, soap. It would be great to put that in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's called, what is it, I Support the Girls? I Support the Girls, yes. Like it. That's great. Yeah. It sounds like it. It sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, it could be lunch, dinner, breakfast. We just call. Yeah. Thank you. No, no. So, so you can sign up as a group and decide when you want to do it. it. Typically, it's done either on an evening, any night of the week, or a breakfast or lunch on Saturday or Sunday. Um, so, yeah. And, and typically, the way that works is a, a group will decide, I want to do it at this location, and I want to do it at this location for six times over a year. And what that does is gets it lets you get to know the people that live there. They get to know you. I mean, part of it is the camaraderie. Um, and we have we have <coughs> places all over town. I'm trying to think of a place near here, but y'all probably don't even live near here. Yeah. We're spread out. Yeah. The, our single adult communities are. We have one on I-35 and St. John's. We have uh, one on I-35 and Old Torf. Um, we have one on South Lamar at Blue Bonnet near Old Torf. Uh, we have one on further south on William Cannon, and I can't think of what that is. Um, I'm trying to think of. Jordan mentioned there might be one near the Capitol. We have one near the Capitol. We have one across the street from the Capitol. I can't believe I didn't think of that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Does the dinner sound like something you guys would be interested in getting involved in? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I used to, I used to, I used to offer lots of things, so I did have some to Cool. We, we, we used to, we, uh, there, uh, uh, yeah. we used to uh, say you could come and use the kitchen and cook th- it there, and, one, and I, it's hard to believe, but one of our residents 
reported us, uh, reported that and said that we aren't a restaurant and so we would need all kind of um, special whatever. So we've changed it just to kind of not worry about that uh, and the food has to be cooked when you arrive. How does it, do you so, guys provide any kind of like, and this, I know yes, we're getting into yes, the granularity, yes. but I think it's important for us to like we have kitchens. Do you have like warmers or something that we like bring a huge metal casserole thing and then they stand a warmer or how? It so um, we do. We have ovens, and but I, I'm not sure if that would cross over and be cooking it. Um, <laughs> So we'll go to you for logistics. <laughs> people bring it. People don't reheat it usually. Do do communities tend to kind of bring in what they want, or is there ever like an audit of what people at the community actually want? That's to eat? a very good question, and um, I don't know the answer. Uh, what I typically see people bringing in are big things of like spaghetti and meatballs, or chili, or they'll go and get barbecue. Uh, then they bring salad. I've seen them bring hot dogs. I've seen them bring hamburgers. Um, I think I think what I see the most is spaghetti. But 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 I don't know that that's. I'd just be curious. If yeah. I, I mean, just because they seem very grateful for whatever. Exactly. <laughs> that's Our true. Kosher. That's true. Yeah. 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 So typically, we have about a, a hundred and ten people per community. Typically, the amount that shows up is more like forty. Okay. Okay. And they, and y'all have them like RSVP, correct? We don't. That's another good question. The risk. Yeah. The risk. We'll have to deal with it. Yeah. It, they do not RSVP. We cannot expect that um, to be a reliable number. We let them know with lots of time, and and then and then right before we go around and let people know again, and we have like some. So let me tell you about the, these communities. The communities for uh, these efficiencies communities for single adults, different from family communities, different from a regular apartment. They're more like uh, what a hotel would look like. That you come in a door that, uh, and then you have to cross through a lobby with someone where you check in. If you aren't a resident, if you're a resident, you have a thing that you swap and or whatever you call those. Swipe, yeah. Swipe. Swipe, and then you get to go in, and now you're in a secure place that people cannot enter unless they've signed in and been let in. So um, everyone has to go past this same central place to get in and out, and that's where we put all our signs. And uh, so everyone sees it. It's, it's um, I mean, it doesn't take much convincing when they say we're serving dinner Saturday night, 6 o'clock. I mean, you have people there at 5 just waiting. I mean, you really do. You really do. And then they want to help you. Nice. They want to help you. They want it. They say, "Can I help you set up the tables? And can I help you serve? And can I?" And when I am there, I say, "You can certainly help me set up the tables, uh, but we want to serve. We we want to be. We want to serve you." What? The, how many volunteers would like for a community where you're serving 50 people? Do you normally bring five volunteers or see five, five, six? I've seen five to ten. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're in a good spot if we have that amount. Yes. And then each of us may be cooking for about 10 people or so or yeah. whatever, what is it like that? Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, you mentioned just briefly before, and maybe y'all can see some uh, examples, uh, but when you mentioned earlier that um, how you guys address how people got homeless in the first place. Yeah. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on that or maybe uh, what perhaps you offer to them in terms of uh, uh, changing mindset or changing bad habits or something simple? Yeah, so so um, everyone comes to us with a different story and, and everyone has quite a story. Um, and most of the time, uh, so let me first say that one of the things I get to do, which I love, is meeting with different residents, hearing their story, helping them get up and speak and tell their story, 
and helping them put their story on a video. So I worked very closely with Leah to, to hear her story and to, and to get it on video. And I have with many, many people. And the things that I see over and over again, it's sad to say, are <coughs> rotten childhoods. I mean, it, it just is. Uh, not the advantages of having a secure home life or any family member that you can turn to when things go badly. Um, not having a lot of education. Um, and so then if just one thing changes, you have no safety net. It, it's, it's, most of us have had one thing go wrong in our lives, and many of us have a safety net to turn to. And, and that's what I typically see the most. It's either a health issue, um, it's finding yourself a single parent. Uh, that's, that's a lot of the time. It's a lot, there are a lot of women who find themselves pregnant, can't find the father, or the father decides he doesn't want to be around. Um, and so there's a lot of that. There are health issues, especially for our single adults. There are, there are many, many health issues. There's mental health issues. There are disabilities, uh, coming out of rehab, coming out of prison, um, can't get a job. So let me say about coming out of prison that anyone that comes out of prison for a – anyone that has committed a violent felony it won't, cannot live with us. But you can live with us if you've committed a felony – um, that's nonviolent, and a lot of the people that do live with us have committed things that go with being homeless, like trespassing, drug use, public intoxication, um, so as things. But yes, so then how do we address those things, is what you're saying. So we have case managers that are at all of our communities that you can choose to see if you want, we have nurses that come by. We, we can connect you with a psychiatrist. We can connect you with doctors, um, counselors. Uh, so we, can, we help you with those health things. We offer fitness classes, yoga classes, stress management classes, uh, group counseling sessions, all that are going on all the time that you can come to if you wish. No one is forced to do anything. Then all kind of financial stability. I mean, that, a lot of it is is. I mean, that's very helpful. The financial stability piece. Uh, for, I want to say that no one is forced to do anything. It's all there available to them. But there is one group, and it's formerly homeless families that come to us that are making nothing, and we have a special program for these families, and it is. For 18 months, we will work with you, and you are required to do something. And for 18 months, we will work with you till we get you to that level, uh, which is the next level up, which is just, I can't afford to live in Austin. During that time, you must see a case manager once a week. You must do our financial stability program. You must listen to our parent advocate if you have children. Um, we are working with you week by week to get you to that next point. Does that, is that answering your yeah, question? Answering okay. Um, so, excuse me, are you familiar with redemptive work? Uh, is, that, is, that, is, that a, is that an organization or a term? A local, no, it's a local nonprofit. I'm not. That, um, specifically helps people um, uh, just get back on their feet, basically. Um, so I just wanted I don't. Yeah, I don't. And, and it, is it people who, what, just. It's, it's anyone that, um, you know, walks into their. Um, Building? Their, their clinic or their, their whatever they, a work center or something like that, their center. Mm -hmm. And then they sit down with a case manager and then they um, work with them on, on getting them the education they need or, or whatever skills they need. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know the details all that, all that much, mm -hmm. but um, I got familiar with the woman who started it, and um, I wondered if maybe you were partnering with them in uh, some way. Yeah, we're not. Okay. Redemptive? Redemptive work. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. <coughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. So, um, 
a couple of things uh, financially and volunteering wise. <coughs> Austin Oasis is not here to be a gate. So some of the problems or some of the programs <coughs> like um, tax prep or financial counseling, we're probably not going to have a group that just volunteers for that. Um, and frankly, it's, it's, it's really a one-on-one -on -one type of relationship anyway. It's not something you, that you would do as a group. Contact them directly uh, about volunteering for specific things that you want to do. I think the Supper Club is something we're probably very interested in doing, and everyone seems to agree. Um, maybe the healthcare science program might be something we could do together. It's a shorter commitment, like six weeks. It does require a little bit of training. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're thinking about doing that, maybe we could do that together as well. But all the other ancillary programs and things that you have skills for, contact them directly. It's a great organization. Um, as far as money goes, um, there is a need for money, obviously. <coughs> we are, again, not here to be a gate. We, we, we do have the ability to earmark funds, and we have done that before for foundation communities. Uh, we we, we mm -hmm. contribute directly to foundation communities as an organization. Uh, we just signed on to be a home builder. Yeah. That's a $1,000 per year commitment. That's Thank you. Bucket, right? Thank you. Something. But you can still give directly, too. That's okay. We're not here to be a gate. If you want to do it through us, cool. I think that gives us a little bit of, what is the word I'm looking for? Good PR, maybe? <laughs> yeah, but, but do it directly, too. We're not, we don't want to get in anyone's way. We're just glad they're here, too, and are willing to share what they're doing and help people figure out how they can connect and contribute as well. So, so, so I do, I wonder, um, <clears throat> do we, as far as how I, we make contact. Mm -hmm. Do do I? I mean, typically, with um, I get everybody's. I, I'm not going to do that. Get everyone's number and email and contact you all. Um, but I'm wondering how we we make connect. How I connect back. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I think the way we've been kind of uh, approaching this is for anyone too interested. If you have other nonprofits you're interested in, we've kind of been assigning like almost like an. an management style kind of thing, right? Like there's a certain person that you go to that okay. is in charge of that relationship and building that relationship with you guys. We do see this as a partnership. It's not just a one-off, right? We're, yeah. we're making a commitment to you. Yeah. So, um, is that wrong? Well, I think making yeah. a yeah. point of contact. Probably be your yeah. main contact here. But, um, yeah. And that's, you know, coordinating stuff coming up, and then obviously I'm, I'm going to be helping with that, but it will just be yeah. ongoing conversation. Thank you. Stuff, so. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you so much. So much. Thank you. All.